Hey guys, Zane here with another One Take Review, and today I want to talk about the new Sabaton album, The War to End All Wars. If you couldn't tell, this album is about, you know, uh, uh, war. But more importantly, it's also Sabaton's 10th studio album, you know, uh, breaking into the double digits, finally. Uh, 10 albums, it's more than most bands can uh, say they've put out in their careers, and, I mean, like them or not, Sabaton have kind of been a... Uh, mainstay within power metal and even metal itself even if they aren't maybe the most critically beloved band or even the most just beloved band in general but they certainly do have their diehard fans and this is another solid entry in their very deeply history related discography like most power metal sabaton as a band as well as this album the war to end all wars is kind of uh has a big appeal in terms of uh vocals a lot of people go towards it because of the vocals and uh, in the case of Sabaton, they are fronted by Joachim, or, uh, Joachim Broden. I apologize if I pronounced that name incorrectly. I'm horrible at pronouncing non-English names. But uh, he is the vocals for the band, and he's kind of uh, gotten some reputation over time of being arguably one of the few uh, generally known names in power metal throughout the metal community. While he does slightly suffer from some classic power metal kind of tropes in terms of vocals on otherwise solid songs like the Christmas Truce, I think that he's a solid vocalist overall, and the sort of symphonic vocals, especially the backing vocals on songs like Versailles, I think that uh, it's an interesting, or at least maybe not interesting, but at least well-performed and well-executed style of vocals overall. There really isn't much to say about the vocal work on this record overall, I mean, if you are a previously established Sabaton fan and you like them because of their vocal work, then you'll like this album. It's it's the same as all other nine studio Sabaton albums, any live albums they might have that I'm not aware of, I'm sure. But if you're not a uh, pre-established fan, if you're a new listener, your appreciation for uh, dramaticism will definitely affect whether or not you enjoy the vocal work on this album. Because if you don't, then you're probably just going to find it cheesy and over the top. But if you are able to enjoy that kind of vocal style, especially in power metal, I think you'll like this album. The instrumentals are nothing super spectacular either, but they're still solid overall. It's not like they're bad or anything. Uh, the group delivers some solid bass and drum work overall. There's actually some really good riffs throughout here on songs like uh, Lady of the Dark and uh, Dreadnought is especially a really good song, a highlight in my opinion. Both of those songs are highlights. And I think the instrumentals, they're fine overall. Though I will admit that those aforementioned riffs, they do get kind of tired and repetitive, especially since it's the same exact guitar tone doing the kind of same exact thing repeatedly, and about maybe three quarters of the way through the album, because this is only a 40 minute record, it gets a little tired. That isn't to mention the fact that the guitar solos kind of trade in passion for the sake of being performed almost flawlessly, and that's kind of a mainstay thing in Sabaton's discography now, most power metal, or even most polished metal in general. But at the same time, I will take uh, raw scrappiness over polished perfection any day. I will take something that's imperfect if there's more emotion behind it. I think most people would agree with me on that. But, I mean, again, it's not like it takes away from the album or anything like that. There's solid musicianship throughout the war to end all wars. And overall, I think that they do, they know what they set out to do make another Sabaton album, and, and they did it well. The lyricism found throughout uh, The War to End All Wars, it, it's about what you'd expect from Sabaton. If you're not familiar with the band and their writing style, they pretty much exclusively write about history, more specifically both of the World Wars, more specifically than that, heavily focusing on World War One, as far as what I've heard, but they do a lot of World War Two. They probably balance it out, actually, for the most part. My point is that they, they do talk about uh, the World Wars a lot. Now that I think about it as I'm recording this video, having heard several Sabaton albums now, I don't think I've heard a single Sabaton song that isn't about World War I or World War II. And if anyone's watching this who's familiar with any other Sabaton songs about different topics, even different parts of history or different wars, please direct me to that uh, direction, because, I mean, I, I just like to hear them do something different. That's not to say it's bad, but I, again, just like the guitar riffs, it does kind of get a little bit tiring after a while hearing the same exact things, even if there are different subjects, the whole entire setting of the World Wars. It, it gets a little old after a while, but still, Stormtroopers is a song on here that uh, kind of takes that theme, and uh, you've got Race to the Sea. Their song, every song on here is about the World Wars, but, I mean, they do it well. It's not like it's something that's done poorly or anything like that. It, it's executed as fine as it can be. 
even if the songwriting is probably only going to be immediately understood by the biggest World War geeks, I do think that uh, it's a charming kind of style, but it's understandably what a lot of people criticize about the band as well, that sort of repetition of the same exact, not so much subjects, but like I said, setting and themes. There was even a point, I could be mistaken, but I believe there was a point where the band were accused of Nazism for uh, writing a song about Germany during, well, a few songs about Germany during World War II, which that's set aside because, well, I mean, that, that's a whole, that's a whole bag into and of itself. It, again, it, like I said, it, it's charming, but it just kind of, it, it becomes a bit much after a while, even if you're talking about different people and different ships and different battles throughout the World Wars, you're still writing and singing and playing about the World Wars. But then again, unless you're a new listener who's totally unfamiliar with Sabaton, and you're familiar with Sabaton's style, then you are understanding of their lyricism. So if you're a returning fan of Sabaton, it's not like anything's changed here. The only complaint you might have is actually exactly that, that nothing has changed here. Uh, this album was released on the Nuclear Blast record label, which I'm sure many metal fans are familiar with. They've done albums for a huge amount of bands, both... Uh, very popular newer metal bands, as well as some kind of classic artists, like, say, uh, I believe Anthrax released a uh, few albums on Nuclear Blast. I don't know if they're still signed to Nuclear Blast or not, but some more classic metal bands that have, you know, tried to kind of revive their popularity and whatnot over the years. Nuclear Blast is a pretty big deal overall, and like a lot of Nuclear Blast records, I do think that The War to End All Wars is kind of overproduced. I mean, seriously, every time I hear a Nuclear Blast record label album, I can't help but wonder if they have just one single house producer that somehow magically works on the, you know, dozens of albums that the record label pushes out every year. Because almost every album that I've heard that has come out under the name Nuclear Blast Records has come across as overproduced, and it just, it really irks me. It's not just Sabaton, either. It's Rob Zombie, it's Creator... You know, there are just a lot of bands here that have put out solid enough material that could have been elevated to another level if it weren't so overproduced and overly polished to an unnecessary extent. Like I said, Sabaton's no uh, example of a band that doesn't sound overproduced on Nuclear Blast. You've got songs here like Soldier of Heaven that are good on their own, but they could have been a lot better. They could have reached their full potential in a more raw state, a more underproduced state, but... At the same time, it doesn't hold the band back from sounding tight and collected. It's not like they sound like a, a mess of just over-polished ideas. It, it still sounds fine, the record. It's, it actually sounds good. It just sounds so good that it starts to be less good as an experience overall. And I know that may sound strange, but I think anyone familiar with Nuclear Blast as a label will at least maybe slightly know what I'm talking about. So overall, uh, The War to End All Wars is another solid entry in the Sabaton discography. Like all other Sabaton albums I've heard, it could have been a lot better. It's not an example of, you know, peak power metal. It's not even an example of peak modern power metal, 20, not even peak 2010s power metal. They aren't the best power metal band out there, and I don't think that their fame exactly represents the best of the best of the genre. But you've got some really great songs here, like Lady of the Dark, that stand out among some otherwise good but not great tracks. In fact, I would even go as far as to say that while they're not the best power metal band out right now, I will say they're one of the most consistent. I've never heard a Sabaton album or even maybe even a song by Sabaton that I've thought, oh wow, that was pretty weak. They sound good consistently, it's just they rarely ever reach levels of greatness. But, I mean, if a band just wants to stay consistently good, and I don't think they have that much potential to really elevate themselves that high of a level. I'm fine with it. I'm fine. I'm really, I'm cool with the band being consistently pretty good if I don't think they can really be really great. And I, no offense to Sabaton, but 10 albums into your career and you still just sound pretty good. I don't think you have a chance to be really great unless, you know, you manage to pull some kind of just magic and make the greatest metal album of all time but i just truly don't think that's possible unfortunately with sabaton so i mean for the time being at least in my opinion and in my experience of listening to them i'm just gonna have to live with good for now and this is fine by me i would however like to see them move on to a different war besides world war one and two primarily world war two i it would be great if they moved on I, that would be wonderful literally any other war i'm not even talking any other point in history i just any war 
the, the Spanish-American War, the, the Vietnam War, literally any war. You know, the Spanish Revolution, I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's charming, don't get me wrong. The World War stuff, it's charming, but it's also what prevents me from wanting to listen to more than a couple songs by them at a time unless I'm reviewing one of their albums. Because I can get into the whole World War kind of style, but there becomes a point where it's just, it's just too much. And I mean, I get that the World Wars have always been deeply woven into the power metal scene, and just so is history in general. I mean, look at certain bands that have, you know, made their career off of just general history, but the thing that is nice about that is that a lot of other bands that have power metal history themes do more than just the World Wars, and I would just, I'd like to see Sabaton move on. I don't think they will, I don't think they ever will, and if they do, it'll probably be just for like a single, and then the album's about like the... This obscure uh, American battleship that was in the last couple of years of World War II. And, I mean, you know, I, again, I'm fine with that. I, I've learned to live with it for Sabaton. It's not like you can expect some experimental greatness out of them. And with that being said, uh, I'm going to give this album three and a half stars out of five. It's It could be a lot better, but it, it's a good listen, and it's fun. And if you're a Sabaton fan, you'll like this, because it's, they kind of pull an ACDC, and they just kind of do the same thing that they did... For the past nine albums as they now go into a double digit long discography so yeah three and a half stars and with that being said that is the end of this review and i will see you guys in the next one